English with me. The tale of Squirrel Nutkin. This is a tale about a tail, a tail that belonged to a little red squirrel, and his name was Nutkin. He had a brother called Twinkleberry, and a great many cousins. They lived in a wood at the edge of a lake. In the middle of the lake, there is an island covered with trees and nut bushes, and amongst those trees stand a hollow oak tree, which is the house of an owl, who is called Old Brown. One autumn, when the nuts would ripe and the leaves on the hazel bushes would golden and green, Nutkin and Twinkleberry and all other little squirrels came out of the wood and down to the edge of the lake. They made little raft out of twigs, and they paddle away over the water to Old Island to gather nuts. Each squirrel has a little sack and a large oar, and spread out of his tail for a sail. They also took with them an offering of tree fat mice and a present for Old Brown, and put them down upon his doorstep. Then Twinkleberry and the other little squirrels each made a low bow and said politely, "Old Mr. Brown, will you favor us with permission to gather nuts upon your island?" But Nutkin was excessively impertinent in his manners. He bobbled up and down like a little red cherry, singing, "Riddle me, riddle me, rot, rot, toe." A little wee man in a red red coat, staff in his hand and a stone in his throat. If you tell me this riddle, I'll give you a groat. Now this riddle is as old as the hills. Mister Brown paid no attention whatever to Nutkin. He shut his eye obstinately and went to sleep. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts. And sail away home in the evening. But next morning, they all came back again to Old Island, and Twinkleberry and others brought a fine fat mole and laid it on the stone in front of Old Brown's doorway and said, "Mr. Brown, will you favor us with your gracious permission to gather some more nuts?" But Nutkin, who had no respect, began to dance up and down. Tickling old Mr. Brown with a nettle and singing, "Old Mr. Brown, riddle me re, hid a pity within the wall, hid a pity without the wall. If you touch hid a pity, hid a pity will bite you." Mr. Brown woke up suddenly and carried the mole into his house. He shut the door in Nutkin's face. Presently. A little thread of blue smoke from a wood fire came up from the top of the tree, and Nutkin peeped through the keyhole and sang, "A house full, a hole full, and you cannot gather a bowl full." The squirrels searched for nuts all over the island and filled their little sacks, but Nutkin gathered oak apples, yellow and scarlet, and sat upon a beech stump playing marbles. And watching the door of old Mister Brown. On the third day, the squirrels got up very early and went fishing. They caught seven fat minnows and present for old Brown. They paddled over the lake and landed under a crooked chestnut tree on Old Island. Twinkleberry and six other little squirrels each carry a fat minnow, but Nutkin. Who had no nice manners brought no present at all. He ran in front, singing, "The man in the wilderness said to me, 'How many strawberries grow in the sea?' I answered him as I thought good, 'As many red herrings that grow in the wood.'" But old Mister Brown took no interest in riddles, not even when the answer was provided for him. On the fourth day, the squirrel brought a present of six fat beetles, which were as good as plums in plum pudding for Old Brown. Each beetle was wrapped up carefully in a dark leaf, 
fastened with a pine needle pin. But Nutkin sang as rudely as ever. Oh, Mr. Brown, riddle me re, flower of England, fruit of Spain, met together in shower of rain, put in a bag tied round with a string. If you tell me this riddle, I'll give you a ring. Which was ridiculous of Nutkin, because he had not got any ring to give to Old Brown. The other squirrels hunted up and down the nut bushes, but Nutkin gathered robin bench cushions off a briar bush and stuck them for a pine needle pin. On the fifth day, the squirrel brought a present of wild honey. It was so sweet and sticky that they licked their fingers as they put it down upon the stone. They had stolen it out of Bumblebee's nest on the tippy pitty top of the hill. But Nutkin skipped up and down, singing, "Hum a bum buzz buzz, hum a bum buzz." As I went over Tipotine, I met a flock of bonny swine, some yellow neck, some yellow back. They were a very boniest swine that ever went over Tipotine. Old Mister Brown turned up his eyes in disgust at the impertinence of Nutkin. But he ate up the honey. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts. But Nutkin sat upon a big flat rock and played nine pins with a crab apple and green fir cones. On the sixth day, which was Saturday, the squirrels came again for the last time. They brought a new laid egg in a little rush basket as a last parting present for Old Brown. But Nutkin ran in front, laughing and shouting, "Humpty Dumpty lies in the bag, with a white counterpane round his neck. Forty doctor and forty right cannot put Humpty Dumpty to rights." Now old Mister Brown took an interest in eggs. He opened one eye and shut it again, but still he did not speak. Nutkin became more and more impertinent. Oh, Mr. B! Oh, Mr. B! Hickamore, hackamore on the king's kitchen door. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't drive Hickamore, hackamore off the king's kitchen door. Nutkin danced up and down like a sunbeam, but still, Old Brown said nothing at all. Nutkin began again. Arthur Old Bower has broken his ban. He comes roaring up the land. The King of Scot, with all his power, cannot turn Arthur off the bower. Nutkin made a whirring noise to sound like the wind, and he took a running jump right onto the head of Old Brown. Then all at once, there was a flutterment, and a scufflement, and a loud squeak. The other squirrels scuttered away into the bushes. When they came back, very cautiously. Peeping through the tree, there was Old Brown sitting on his doorstep, quite still, with his eyes closed, as if nothing had happened. But Nutkin was in his waistcoat pocket. This looks like the end of the story, but it isn't. Old Brown carried Nutkin into his house and held him up by the tail, intending to skin him. But Nutkin pulled so very hard that his tail broke in two, and he dashed up the staircase and escaped out of the attic window. And to this day, if you meet Nutkin up a tree and ask him a riddle, he will throw sticks at you and stamp his feet and scold and shout, "Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo!"